Today we're talking about Iran, both a country and a decent description of Europe's diplomatic strategy for that country. In a how is this even possible plot twist, Western relations with Iran might be getting even worse this week. And I say the West because this is more of a Europe Iran episode than an America Iran episode. Turns out the news doesn't always have to be about he who must not be named. You see, the US pulled out of the Iran deal in 2015. But you know who didn't? Everyone else who signed it. Ever since 2015, Europe and other countries have been slipping Iran a little food here and there like a mom whose kid just got grounded. I know your father said no dinner, but here's a little something so you don't starve. This relationship has kept Iran in the Iran deal and not building nukes for, wow, four years. On Wednesday though, we saw this report. Other signatories to the nuclear deal have 60 days to help Iran sell oil and gain access to international banking services. Otherwise, Iran will scale up its uranium enrichment program. I saw that and immediately started panicking because, oh god, I have to come up with even more Iran puns? I haven't quite gotten to their country's name sounding like an Apple product yet, but oh man, the bottom of this barrel is approaching quickly. Thank you to my mom for coming up with this pun. Anyways, yeah, wow. If they don't get access to oil markets and foreign banks within the next 60 days, they're going to essentially reopen their nuclear program. For the vast majority of us who don't want to live in a post-apocalyptic world, this is not good news. Now, the last few episodes of this show where we talked about Iran were specifically a year ago, the United States sanctioning their financial systems, then about half a year ago, the United States sanctioning their oil, and last week, the United States taking away waivers for countries that we exempted from our initial oil sanctions. Gee, I wonder if that last one has anything to do with the current predicament we're in today. Basically, if you're curious about the events that led to this, I'll be posting some links at the end. For now though, what is going on? President Hassan Rouhani's warning that Iran may take the further step of no longer limiting uranium enrichment, a key component of the Iran deal, puts pressure on European nations to find a compromise and ratchets up tensions with the United States. So this is the decision Europe is faced with right now. Iran's ultimatum about restarting its nuclear program leaves European nations with an unenviable choice. Either side with Iran and possibly provoke the U.S.'s wrath, or abandon the nuclear deal and risk the rise of a nuclear-armed Iran. So the ball's in Europe's court now. Oddly enough, Iran is putting a gun to Europe's head to get them to do the two activities America loves most. You have to buy our oil and you have to give us access to your loans. Or else. I think we could work something out. So if Europe wants to capitulate with Iran's demands, what can they do? Well, the first answer to probably cross your mind is to tell America to suck a big one and buy Iranian oil. I mean, being forced to buy oil, I can think of worse punishments. Well, even if the EU starts a special mechanism to finance business with Iran, each country's oil buyers would face US sanctions for resuming purchases. Now, This single sentence really sent me down a rabbit hole. Because how bad are these US sanctions for violating Iranian sanctions? I mean, avoiding a nuclear Iran by buying oil? That sounds like any country's diplomatic dream come true. Now, it's only hard to find specifics on this, but don't worry, because I found a Department of the Treasury memo from November 5th that laid it out in such boring details, it would probably put an iTunes user agreement to sleep. Now, I'm going to throw the technical text up right here if we have any lawyers watching who want to pause and read legal agreements for fun, or if you're having trouble sleeping. But basically, if you're found in violation of these Iranian sanctions, well, you can kiss goodbye any business you have in America. I mean, these sanctions for violating sanctions are strict to the point where if you get caught violating Iranian sanctions, Iran might feel pity on you. I know Iran's a big country, but if you're a European company and you have to pick between business with Iran and business with America, you might find yourself saying, 
well, if Iran gets a nuke, they're probably going to use it against America and not us. So let's preserve our American business. A quote from the British Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt sums up Europe's attitude best. And by the way, in the clip, Hunt uses JCPOA, which is how people who like to be asked, what does JCPOA mean, refer to the Iran deal. JCPOA is a deal. And in return for the lifting of sanctions, Iran has agreed to vital compliance measures. If they break that deal, then there will be consequences in terms of how European powers react. Iran is stuck between two pretty terrible choices right now. They signed on to a deal that the US has backed out of. And we saw a few days ago... Experts say China may give up Iranian oil which makes up about 7% of China's total oil imports, to avoid jeopardizing discussions on trade. So yeah, the main benefit to not starting the process of building nukes now is exclusively trade with Europe, a country that hasn't sanctioned you yet, but is currently too scared to trade directly with you. So not the biggest selling points in the world. Europe has set up some loophole back channels, but I wouldn't base my future economic success on that. On the other hand, if they violate the Iran deal, well, that's it. Europe will pile on the sanction strain, Iran will restart their nuclear program, and the world will come together and say, gee, we have to stop this. Basically just setting the clock back to right before the Iran deal was signed last time. Except everybody involved is just a lot angrier at the United States. I mean, from Iran's perspective, this decision currently is. Do we want this meager cash flow or a restarting of our nuclear program? This is why their negotiators are saying, Tehran now says that it will resume high level enrichment of uranium if the remaining signatory countries do not keep their promises under the agreement. The UK, France, Germany, China and Russia now have 60 days to help protect Iran's oil and banking sectors from US sanctions. Basically, guys, we had this deal and then you took away every good thing this deal gave us, but you still expect us to hold up our end of the bargain. Who do you think we are, Mets fans? So now Iran's looking to Europe to get back some of that global trade that they were promised. And Europe is looking to America for leniency. And if you want to know how that American leniency is going to go, this was also reported yesterday. Hello and welcome to the program. Our top story. Well, US President Donald Trump has announced new sanctions on Iran's metal sector after the Iranian government suspended some of its commitments to the landmark deal. So I don't think I'd put money on America having a change of heart anytime soon. Especially because Iran threatening to restart their nuclear program might be the best evidence yet that American sanctions are really succeeding. I mean, Iran was being coy there for quite a while, downplaying the effects of these sanctions. But oh man, did they just lose their cool in front of everyone. The big question now is, what's the end game here? Some people are saying it's to provoke war, considering our current national security advisor a few years ago wrote an opinion piece called, To Stop Iran's Bomb, Bomb Iran which is equal parts alarming and great wordplay. People who believe this strategy is reality will point to, earlier this week it was reported. Uh, the other developing story, the US sending an aircraft carrier group to the Middle East to send what it calls a clear message to Iran. Europe is hoping it will end with a weakened but still intact Iran deal. But that might be hard to get, considering their only vehicle for conducting business with Iran, without facing massive sanctions, focuses on the sectors most essential to the Iranian population, but not Iranian markets, such as pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and agri-food. And frankly, that's just not big business in Iran. That's just the stuff that the US, for ethical purposes, hasn't sanctioned yet. Yeah, when you start sanctioning food and medicine, that's a one-way ticket to the wrong side of history. It would be like trying to keep the auto industry afloat by promising to continue to buy Chevy brand hats. They want to be moving oil and have access to financing. America's goal, on paper, is that we want to bring Iran back to the negotiating table. Because it worked out so well for them last time, four years ago. 
Really hoping they have the memories band of a goldfish to pull this one off. The last mainstream idea for now is that this will end in a Venezuela style internal revolution, spurred on by the US making conditions unlivable over there. And we all know if that happens, well that revolutionary group is just gonna love America. Now I can't predict the future, if I could I'd have a lot more money, so take this last section with an entire shaker of salt. Who knows what'll be tweeted tomorrow? That's exactly what's going on with Iran right now though, and until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click here if you want to learn more about the banking sections at Iran, and here if you want to learn about our most recent oil sanctions. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to click here to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. If you liked this episode, remember to give me a thumbs up, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.